Hi everyone, uh, Chris Munyon with Sonar Talent, and today I'm going to walk through a sample script to show you how ChatGPT could maybe uh, augment or potentially even replace uh, recruiters at some point in the future. Now, before I kick off, there's been a lot of talk about how ChatGPT and language models in general may impact the recruiting industry. Uh, up front, I don't believe that this is actually going to replace the job of recruiters, but I actually think the recruiting role is going to really change. And I think that the people that really start to embrace what AI can do and really understand how to use it in the day to day jobs will be the people that are in the most demand when recruiting and hiring really starts to kick off again. So the goal of this video is to just show you some of the basic capabilities that a small amount of learning can actually uh, get and also show really where I think uh, the opportunity lies in the future. So with that being said, uh, I spent a couple of hours building this out and researching different different uh, ways to, to develop this. Uh, it's all freely available. You can download, you can clone the repo into your local directory. You can play with it. You can implement it into your process, do whatever you want. Um, this is not for sale. This is not um, you know, designed as a money-making tool, but really as an educational tool to hopefully help pe more people understand the, uh, the capabilities of, of this kind of technology. I would also love to understand uh, what other questions come out of this. So please drop a, a comment to me if there's anything that you see that uh, you think is a little unusual or you would like me to go into more detail with. I find this topic fascinating and it's very uh, related to some of the work that we're doing on actually building uh, more automated recruiting processes with Sonar Talent. Uh, so uh, with that being said, I'm going to jump straight in. Um, now, all of this should be self-contained in the Git repo that I uh, will share in, in a link. And you should be able to, to then access all of this. There are a couple of small functions that, are, that I've created that will help along, but most of what you see um, on the screen is actually the, the script that's being run. And so you'll see a lot of this uh, it really just highlights how ChatGPT likes to interface with you as a user. And you could really start to take this to the next level if you wanna go a little further than the uh, basic research that I've done. So um, let's start off. So just for um, context, I'm using a tool called uh, Jupyter. And so Jupyter is, I'm going to close these down. Jupyter uh, is a, um, uh, a tool that incorporates Python and allows you to create these uh, notebooks, really used a lot for data science and data analysis. Uh, I really like to use it because I can get instant results and it allows me to save all my work. Uh, it's not really as great for, for building uh, applications, but for a, uh, a, an enthusiastic analyst like myself, this is a really good tool to use. Um, all the instructions on how to set this up should be in the GitHub um, README, so, so please refer to that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is actually load the, the packages. So there's a few packages that we, uh, we're going to load here. The ones that I'm going to call out are um, the OpenAI package, um, the language model from this um, tool called Langchain. Uh, we may use that actually if we go a little, little deeper on developing this in the future. And then there's some helper functions that I've created just to um, cut some of the process down a little bit of, of, um, uh, of actually moving through this. So we're going to load the packages. It takes a few seconds for that to, to happen. At uh, the next stage, this is going to be very different for everyone. Now, uh, I have OpenAI credentials uh, based on um, the account that I've set up. Anyone can set up an account. It's free to set up, free to use the current research license. Uh, there will be options to pay in the future. But uh, once you've got a, an account there, you can generate an API key, and this is where you, you want to put that in. Um, I've put it into a separate CSV file, which I then load in uh, and just store um, as an object here. What that allows me to do is, uh, is have my API key in the background without anybody seeing what that is. So I'm going to store that here. And then the third thing we need to do is to set everything up is actually load the language model. So uh, the current um, language model that I have available that I've found to be most effective in terms of speed and quality is the GPT 3.5 turbo model. Uh, I have registered for the G GPT 4 um, early access. Uh, as soon as I get that, I'll be able to experiment with, um, with how much better that is compared to this current model, um, but we're just going to load the language model, set the temperature to zero. I, I have played around with that, and that um, is something that I think you could do if you if you want to get a little bit more advanced. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to simulate three parts of the recruiting process. So the first part is the intake meeting, uh, where the goal is to capture the requirements of the role in order to kick off the search process. Uh, the second thing we're going to do once we've done that is actually simulate sourcing candidates. So can we actually search for candidates 
um, using ChatGPT as a, as a tool. And then the third part is uh, actually contacting those qualified candidates. So can we actually create customized messaging that we can then use to reach out to these, these individuals in order to actually get that, that ball rolling with the uh, recruiting process and actually move candidates into the top of the funnel. So uh, really what we're trying to do is, is replace a lot of the, the kind of like manual repetitive work that is done early on in the recruiting process uh, with a tool that um, we can just use and within seconds actually get all the information that we need uh, with a little bit of pre-work. And this is then repeatable. And so actually over the long run, if you, you know, were, were to integrate this in a large recruiting team, this could actually save you hundreds of hours of recruiting time, really cut down time to hire, uh, really cut down cost per hire, uh, and it's all available for free, so um, you know, feel free to experiment with that. So there's a couple of things that we're gonna we're gonna load up. Uh, so the first one I'm gonna load is a sample of a intake conversation. So uh, I just created this um, transcript of how I would think about a uh, running an intake meeting with some basic questions. Obviously, you can go into a lot more depth, but the the purpose here is to really show you a sample of how this works. And so we're really covering the typical questions you want to ask a hiring manager just to make sure that you're actually scoping the role properly. And so this is stored in a local text file. We just read it in and you can see the questions and answers there. Uh, the second thing I want, um, because we're generating a job description, I want to know more about the company, specifically the mission and the values of that company. And so what I did here actually is I, uh, from the, the Salesforce careers website, actually just pulled in their, their mission statement uh, with some of their cultural and, and values that they display publicly, uh, cleaned it up so it's just an, an easy to read text format. Uh, and so when I load that in, you can actually see here um, some of the things that they talk about. Uh, and this is, this is really useful because the more text we can feed into the language model, the better our results should be when they come out. And uh, so the final thing we want to do um, is to actually tell the language model what to do. And so think about this as giving a brief to someone who's brand new, who's never done this role before, um, and you're trying to give them as much context as possible in order to do a great job. And so what we're, we're doing here is creating a prompt to help the chat GPT model create a job description precisely how we, we want them to create it. And it's never going to come out perfect, but the more information you give up front, the better the result should be. And so you can read through all this. This is really um, kind of a bunch of prompts that I have fed into the model. Uh, and I'm just using this kind of simple way to load it in. Um, and you'll see it calls in uh, the requirements of the role based on that transcript. And it calls in the values of the organization based on what we pulled from the Salesforce website. And the last thing I'm, I'm saying is write a job description that achieves the goal of attracting strong candidates. That's ultimately what we want. We want to make sure that we solve for all of the requirements of the hiring manager, but also uh, attract candidates when they see the job description. And so that's all the context that we're, that we're giving them. We're giving them a uh, chat GPT, a, a rough structure that we want them to follow. Um, some, some best practices. This is actually from uh, Jan Tegzi's book, uh, Full Start Recruiter. Uh, I've been using this uh, to really help understand best practices a little bit more. So I'd, I'd highly recommend that. And we're going to load this prompt now. And then um, that's pretty much all the setup done to create the job description. All we want to do, na do now is ask ChatGPT to take this information and write as a job description. So uh, I'm going to write, uh, run this right now. Uh, it takes a few seconds for the model to actually run because that's actually processing all the information we gave it. And uh, as soon as it comes back, we can actually take a look and see um, you know, how effective that is. And so uh, the job title is sales manager. That, that makes sense. Uh, we can read the summary. Yeah, that seems to follow along with the kind of requirements that we, we established in that intake meeting. Uh, the key requirements, um, proven success, managing teams. Yep, yeah, these all look pretty good. The only thing I, I would be concerned about is the bachelor's degree in business or related field. I, I wonder if that's actually relevant to be a sales manager. Um, but the, the purpose really here is this has actually generated that template that we can then go through and edit. Um, but we're not really gonna do any of that as part of this process. We're actually just gonna store that job description, uh, keep it within this script. And we're actually gonna use it a little bit later on. And so you can see that it's really started to incorporate all of those things uh, with very minimal work from us up front. And it's tried to create more of like a very customized, customized approach based on the prompts that we've, we've given it. Uh, so the second thing we're, we're going to do, so we have our job description now. Let's assume that we've posted uh, the job description online, but we know that we actually need to go and start sourcing to get candidates into the top of the funnel. So uh, our next goal is to source candidates to find good candidates that could fill the role. Uh, and really, we want to build a sourcing pipeline of highly qualified candidates. 
And so to do that, we're going to use the sourcing prompt again. So this time we're telling ChatGPT, you're now a sourcer at Salesforce. Um, I'm going to give you a job description and you're going to give me a Boolean search string that I can then use to search on Google to try and find potential candidates. And so uh, we feed in the job description um, and that was the job description we generated in, in that first step. And we generate this, this prompt. Um, and now we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to build um, a language model based on this prompt and see what it gives us back. So we're going to get a search string back. Uh, which we should then be able to use. So here's a Boolean search string that ChatGPT has generated for us. Um, so these these look good. So sales manager or sales management, uh, either Salesforce or cloud-based software, a um, couple of the key requirements that you know we, we probably want. Um, and I'm using Google to search for this because when I use LinkedIn, um, the uh, this amount of um, Boolean uh, coding actually didn't return any results. Uh, but when I ran the same thing in Google, we actually found that um, we were getting some some relevant results. And so uh, one thing I've created here, you see the helper function uh, actually uses LinkedIn profiles from Google. So it takes this Boolean search, it turns it into a query on Google, it searches on Google, and it then scrapes the first page of results only. We're just using a sample set, set here. Um, obviously, if you were, um, uh, if you're working with us or you're working with another company, you'd probably want to use this same process to actually generate a, a larger, much larger sourcing list. But in practice, this has generated 10 profiles. So we'll see how it works uh, when we run this now and we'll see the profiles we get. So here we go. We've got 10 profiles. Um, and these are people who potentially match the role that we are looking to fill. So let's, let's take a sample of some of these and see, um, if this makes sense. So I'm just going to click every other every other person. Uh, I haven't prepared this, so it may be that um, we don't find uh, you know, the, the, the perfect mix of people. Uh, regional sales manager at Salesforce, SMB growth business leader at Salesforce, regional sales manager, regional sales manager, and nonprofit partner sales at Salesforce. So without going into too much detail, um, we, and I, I uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on my LinkedIn profile, but um, roughly these kind of profiles seem to be about what we're looking for. Uh, now, I'm not gonna use these profiles in the demo because um, that would uh, mean that we'd actually have to um, use some of the proprietary technology or actually um, kind of scrape those profiles, which we know LinkedIn doesn't like uh, like us to do. So um, so we're gonna move forward and actually use a, a different sample set when we're thinking about our, our, our reach strategy. Um, but that really is, is just showing how, um, without really any additional um, kind of external work, we can actually generate a list of potential candidates just using ChatGPT and a, a, a pretty basic function that I built out to search on Google. So the final step here is to con contact the qualified candidates. And so here, what we're going to do is um, actually read in this uh, file that I created. Uh, which you'll have access to it's in the results folder called search results and all this does is uh, look at a candidate's history um, based on what you'd see from a resume or a linkedin profile or something like that this is just a sample set from some early work that, that we actually did here um, and i'm going to create this sample list and just show you what it looks like and so um, i won't go into detail about what everything what everything is uh, is doing in that script but what you can see is that you know for each of the names and i use some sample names from a random uh, run a book, um, the company that the person's worked at and the job title, and it's in reverse chronological order. So you can see Voldemort here starts off as a marketing ops coordinator in 2017, and currently is a customer success manager as of the end of 2022. Uh, you can see the same thing happens with Snape. We can see his uh, his progression over time. Uh, really, the purpose here is to just create this list of kind of the backgrounds, uh, and obviously. You can go into much more detail with this. That's actually one of the things that we really focus on is what are the kind of the features within a candidate's background that would potentially make them a good fit for a role. Um, but just as a very surface level, what we're going to do is actually generate um, uh, the kind of the experience uh, in a string that we can actually then feed into the model. So again, I've got a little helper function in here um, that you'll have access to. And all this does is it converts these profiles uh, into an experience. And so what we can see now is Albus um, has a senior executive at Log Me In, and so I'll actually go through his whole work history uh, and show you that in in the experience uh, there. So um, that's kind of the next stage is really to build out this um, kind of experience background, 
And the reason that's important is because we, we actually want to create a more customized outreach strategy so that we can demonstrate that we, we understand how this person's background will fit into our overall desired profile. So uh, let's move on with the, uh, the next stage, which is the outreach prompt. So this is the final part. And again, we're feeding in a prompt to ChatGPT so the language model can interpret what we want and actually give us the result that, that we desire. So here's the outreach prompt. Uh, you're a sorcerer at Salesforce. Um, blah, blah, blah. All we want to do is um, I will provide the job description and kind of the background. You will create a personalized outreach message that aims to schedule the call. So we're going to load this prompt in and we are going to select um, the variables based on this list. And so whichever list of 10 candidates, we're just going to take the first one as an example, uh, which should be Albus. And that's then going to give us um, kind of one sample to really play around with. So if I was doing this for a um, you know, much bigger sample set, I would probably just create another column and actually uh, generate this list and maybe build a custom feature set that we could then feed into a CRM to then actually create a, a more automated outreach strategy or a nurture campaign uh, based on the, the kind of configuration that that tool would, would want. So let's um, set the variables in here. And now we're going to do the final um, model, which is this outreach message, where we're going to feed in the job description, the candidate's background, the candidate's name, and the recruiter's name. And what we should get out then is a personalized outreach message that we could then send uh, as a cold email to the candidate um, if that's our sourcing strategy. So we'll load the model. And then as soon as that's complete, we'll take a look at the outreach and see if that makes sense. So I'm going to run this. So here we go. Okay. So here's the custom outreach message. So um, I saw your background uh, at the senior account exec that logged me in. Um, we're currently looking for a sales manager, uh, why it's important to you, what we believe in. Um, and then a call to action, I would love to schedule a call as regards to Chris. And so um, you can look at this and it gives you all the information. It gives you, um, it takes everything that we have uh, found out as we've gone through this process with really very minimal external research required and actually created this outreach strategy. But one of the things I really want to call out now is um, we can see that the model is actually very good at creating uh, pretty basic, uh, basic outputs. So the job description was, was fine. It wasn't great. The candidate list was, was good, but you know, we just saw a whole bunch of candidates of people that already work at Salesforce. And then the outreach message, uh, it makes sense. I've actually see, seen a lot of outreach uh, like this through LinkedIn and, and email inbound to me. Um, but it's really not as personal as I think a dedicated sourcer would be able to make it. And so I think my takeaway for this is ChatGPT is a really good start to automating a lot of the busy work. Um, but really, it, it kind of gives you that foundational level that you can then build on as a really strong recruiter or a really tr strong sourcer to really uh, Im improve results. Um, but I think moving forward, this is going to be the baseline. Like if you if you can't beat ChatGPT, it's going to be very hard to justify uh, why you should have a role against people that are actually in incorporating this kind of technology in their day-to-day -day work. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'm super optimistic about the future. I think this is going to really unlock a lot of uh, great potential um, with certain risks and certain impacts to uh, the, the whole labor market. Um, but I would love to continue engaging on this topic. Um, please drop your comments in the note below. Feel free to use the script. Let me know what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and I would actually love to make this open source and actually um, you know, share the uh, development work on this and you know, figure out if we can actually create a tool that recruiters can then use day to day um, to actually get the results that they, they need. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it all. Have a good one.